What is up book nerds? My name is Hillary and welcome to or welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing my videos on my channel of is the book better than the movie. Over the weekend I watched this movie on Hulu and I have to say it was really really good. That movie was No Exit and this book is by Taylor Adams. I read this I believe in October of this past year and I really enjoyed it. This is a thriller and it's not one to take lightly. It is a very... how do I want to say it? The book and the movie can get very intense and violent so it's not going to be for everybody. I took some notes here while I was watching the movie and there's a about a front and back page and a little on the second page of notes that I took while during the movie just wanting to write down some parts of the movie that were different than the book and then we can talk about them. So No Exit is about a girl named Darby who gets a message from her sister telling her that her mom is sick and she's not doing too good. So right before her Christmas break she leaves school to drive home and be with her mom but during this trip she hits a really bad snowstorm up in the mountains and has to stay there for the night until the morning because this it's a winter weather storm it's really bad and nobody is allowed to be on the roads so while she is at this rest stop she meets four people and they are Ash, Lars, Ed, and Sandy. Darby is trying to find a signal to send a message to her sister to let her know that she will be home in the morning to see their mom. And while she is doing this, she ends up going outside because they told her that they got like one bar of service outside by the sign. So she goes outside and while she is outside, she sees this creepy van and all of a sudden she's just looking at it and a hand pops up on the window and so she decides to look inside and inside there is a girl a little girl who's about nine or ten and she has duct tape and she knows that somebody has kidnapped this girl so while she's at this rest stop she doesn't trust anybody there she's trying to think of who has kidnapped this girl and where are they going and she needs to save this girl that's what she's thinking and mostly in the end she is she figures out who it is and a whole bunch of stuff happens with and it gets kind of gory and very sad and intense but for this part right here this is the no, the spoiler free section so if you don't want to be spoiled for the book or the movie please uh, leave out of here now but come back after you've seen both and see what I've thought Alright, so getting into the spoiler section of this book, we're going to be talking more about the movie because the book and the movie were actually a lot alike. There was just a little bit of things that were different. Like for instance, at the beginning of the movie, you're in the circle of people and Darby is at a rehab facility because she is an addict to any type of drugs. And so she's there and they're sharing. And when it's her turn to share, the nurse comes and says, hey, you have a phone call, it's urgent. And the doctor, doctor or nurse from the hospital, lets her know that her mom has um, a brain aneurysm and is going into surgery. And he just wanted to let her know. And she's trying to get a hold of her sister to find out what's happening. And her sister's telling her, don't come home. Mom don't need you home, we don't need this stress and whatnot. So Darby decides that night that she is leaving this rehab facility and is going to go home. But if she does that, she can get in some serious trouble because for her it was either jail or rehab. And I think she said this is her sixth rehab she's been to, so that's why it was those were her options that she had. So when she's talking to her sister on the phone, she's telling her, hey, can you just call the doctor here so you can let him know that I need to leave to come home and she says no I'm not gonna do that you stay there and all that and Darby you don't really know if she is really close to her mom or not 
but I think in the book they're not super close because of some stuff from the past and that's the hard thing with this book. In the movie, while she's on her way driving home, she decides to pull over and she ends up falling asleep. And while she's asleep, she has a flashback to her, I'm guessing, ODing in her car and her mom and sister find her and that's how she ended up in rehab where she's at. So a cop car pulls up beside Darby while she's parked on the side of the road and tells her, hey, the roads are closed. You can't be on it in until morning. I opened a rest area up there a couple miles away. Go stay there and you can stay warm. So she decides to to go up to the rest area and that's where it all gets started. While she is there, she walks in and the first thing you see are Ed and Sandy who are a couple together in the book but I think they were just friends or they're a couple in the movie but I think they were just friends in the book and then she looks over to her right and Lars is sitting there and then there's a guy sleeping on the bench and she asks them where the bathroom is so she goes to the bathroom and this is where it's different from the book to the movie. The bathroom in the movie is under construction and there's plywood along the um where there's like a big hole in the wall and this will become a big part in the movie and whatnot but she's trying to get signal and she can't get signal so she walks out of the bathroom and asks them hey this has anybody gotten signal here and Ed tells her outside he got like one bar so she decides to go outside and to try and reach her sister so just to let her know that she is on her way and she will be there by morning and while she's out there she walks past his white van and hears screaming in it and at first she just thinks it's the wind because she's looking around but then she keeps hearing it so she walks up to the van and all of a sudden a hand hits the window and she sees a little girl inside that's duct tape. But the difference is with this part is in the book she's also in a dog crate and she's duct tape also. So that's the only difference in this part which I'm kind of glad they didn't add the dog crate in because it would have just been too much for the movie because there's a whole bunch that happens in the movie. But so she tells the girl hey, I will come back. I'm going to get you free. And so she goes back inside the rest area because she can't get any cell service. But before she does that, she takes a picture of the license plate of the van. And when she's back inside the rest area, she goes to the bathroom again and tries to send a text messages, a text message to the police with the picture of the license plate of the van just to let them know. And it's go starting to go through but then it fails because there's no cell service and whatnot. So she ends up coming out and she's looking at everybody trying to figure out who has kidnapped this little girl and what they plan on doing with her. And at this point the guy who was sleeping on the bench wakes up and they're all going around introducing themselves and he his name is Ash. Um, Ash comes over to the table and Ed asks them hey you wanna play poker and Lars says I don't know how to play poker how about we play bullcrap and so he's explaining what's going on with bullcrap and whatnot and they're playing the card game and so on and so forth and then Laura starts acting really weird and out of character and he is freaking out but she gets up and decides to go back outside to try and get cell service again and she ends up sneaking inside Lars's van and takes a exacto knife with her and while she's in there Lars ends up coming out of the building and she hides underneath a blanket and at this point you see that the girl's name is Jay and she is looking sick because it's really cold she has no warmth but there's another reason why she is sick she has Addison's disease which is an adrenaline if she has too much adrenaline going she can die and but anyways Darby is in the back of this van Lars is there too but she's underneath a blanket and she finally knows who the person is that's kidnapped this girl and notices that he has a gun in the back of his pants so he leaves to go get 
Jay some snacks and Darby ends up leaving the ex X-Acto knife with Jay so she can try and cut herself out because Darby needs to get out of the van before Lars comes back. So she goes she goes back into the building but she goes through the the hole that's inside the bathroom that the plywood, plywood was over and so then Ash is coming back to make sure she is okay and she grabs him and brings him in and then tells him what is going on. So Ash comes up with a plan that says Darby will distract Lars by going out there and getting in the van but then when Lars comes out he's gonna hit him over the head with a hammer but in the movie he just rigs a uh, nail gun and so it automatically shoots and whatnot. So while she's in there Jay finally got her hands undone and Darby's telling her hey I have to take this off it's gonna rip like a band-aid then Jay is like she goes I'm gonna get you out and she goes no you can't like where are the guys and she's like guys and she goes yeah there's two of them that took me and then it clicks into her head it's not just Lars, it is Lars and Ash who kidnapped this little girl to take her somewhere. This is where it gets really good. Ash confronts Darby in the bathroom again and tells her if she tells Ed and Sandy, he's going to kill them all. And so she's freaking out. And during this time, she finds out that they're all talking, they're all sitting around the table again talking and um, they're learning some stuff about each other, how Ed was in the Marines and Darby's dad was in the Marines and whatnot, but then Darby's dad actually killed himself a couple of years ago. It's very sad because this becomes a big part in the movie in a way, but so Darby sees that She's looking out the front doors of this rest area and she sees Jay out in the cold and so do Ash and then Lars sees her too. But Ed and Sandy's backs are to the door so they don't know that she is there. Darby gets up and storms back to the bathroom. She's in the back room and she is hiding as Ash comes in because he follows her back there acting like he's so concerned about her and she hits him with a hammer but it does nothing to him. And he takes her down, he starts to like choke her, and Lars comes around to the back where there's a hole in the wall, that same hole that Darby goes in and out of and tells him that Jay is gone, he can't find her. And so they take Darby with them into the woods in the cold to find Jay, and they can't find her. Um, so while they're out there, Darby turns and shines the light in Lars and Ash's eyes and basically blinds them for a second and as the, she does this she falls down this hill and I mean it's pretty bad like I was sitting there I was going oh that, that, that would hurt and all of a sudden Ash shoots his gun and Ed and Sandy hear it so they look outside and they see Jay laying in the snow like because she's so cold and she's sick because of the adrenaline She's passed out. Ed goes out there and grabs her and they bring her in. And all of a sudden, they like, switch back to Darby. She ends up losing Lars and Ash because she throws something in the woods and they hear it, so then they run that way. So she gets up and runs toward the building, um, goes through the front door, and tells Ed and Sandy everything that's going on about how Jay is kidnapped and Lars and Ash are in on it. So they barricade the door and while they're doing this they're talking back and forth with Ash kind of like a hostage situation and Jay wakes up and looks around and says Sandy's name and then there's a flashback of Sandy is Jay's housekeeper in the movie and she organized with Ash and Lars to kidnap Jay from her home but she told her she's like you have to find her medis medication because she has Addison's disease so then Sandy lets Ash and Lars back into the rest area building and 
they have everybody at gunpoint and they give Sandy the medication for Jay and she gives it to Jay and it helps. But then Ed starts talking and he's like so confused because his wife did this for money and he's so upset with her. But in the process while talking to Ash and talking to his wife, Ash pulls the gun up and shoots Ed in the heart and kills him. And then Sandy starts freaking out and crying because her husband is dead, he's been murdered, and it's all her fault. So then Ash points the gun at her and shoots her, but she's not dead. And she... I can't remember which comes first. But at one point he grabs Darby and drags her over to the wall and then grabs her arm. She's fighting him, but he takes the nail gun and nails her arm to the wall. Now in the book, this is actually what happens to Ed in the book, not Darby, but it actually played really good in the movie that it was this way. But then Ash walks up to behind Sandy as she's crying, leaning over her husband, and shoots her in the head, and she dies. And then they're trying to find the keys for the van, and for their van so they can leave, and Darby's not telling them, and so he says, if you don't tell me, I'm going to shoot Jay, and I'm going to kill her. Then a text comes in through Darby's phone, and it's her sister, and her mom died. And Darby is shocked. So Ash is asking Darby, where are the keys? And she's just stunned. She's just sitting there quiet. And she's not answering. So then he grabs Jay. And it's like dragging her. Points the gun at her. And says, where are the keys, Darby? And she's like, in the snow outside the bathroom. So he leaves. And now it's just Lars watching Darby and Jay. And this is where it gets kind of gross because I had to skip some scenes in this movie, but Darby is trying to grab a hammer and she's trying to reach for it, but her arm is nailed to a wall and she can't reach it. So then she tells Jay she needs that hammer and then she tells she looks at Jay because Lars is sitting there because Lars does not want to hurt Jay. He don't want to hurt anybody. He just wanted to get this job done. It's kind of like he has a... He's unstable in a way. But, um... So he is sitting there watching the girls. And Darby looks at Jay and says, I need you to turn the lights off. And Jay's like, well, what if he shoots me? And she's like, he's not going to shoot you. And so Jay gets up. And Lars is freaking out because Jay is walking over towards the lights, but then Darby's trying to distract him. And while he's watching Jay, she has the hammer and pulls the nail out of her arm, which is so gross. And Jay shuts the lights off. He, like, jumps at Jay because he wants her to turn the lights back on, and a gunshot goes off. And Ash hears it. He runs around the building because he finally has the keys too and his brother is at gunpoint by Darby and she says drop it or I shoot him and she, he goes you're Ash goes you're not going to shoot him and she goes keep walking towards me and I will but then Jay comes at the side of Ash and pushes him and his nail gun goes off and a nail gets stuck in Lars's head right here not all the way just like sticking in there and Darby and Jay run out of the building because he's come, uh, Ash is coming towards his brother to catch him so he doesn't fall. And they run to Darby's car and they start it. She, they're trying to start it to, to leave. And he has Lars, but Lars slips on blood and face plants onto the floor and he dies. I mean, I'm pretty sure you can imagine what happened with that nail. So Ash is pissed and he's sad. And so he lights the building on fire because they doused it with gasoline during the hostage situation. 
and he lights the building on fire, turns around, and starts shooting at Jay and Darby's car, flattens the tire, they ran, run into a light post, and she wakes up, but then the police is there because the text went through on Darby's phone, and Ash is by the car, and he's like, wait, officer, I need to help these people, there's people in here, and the officer said, don't move. It's Ash, as she gets out of the car, and the cop tells her, put the gun down, and she's trying to explain to the officer, no, you don't understand, but she won't put the gun down, and the officer shoots Darby. So Ash gets up, grabs the gun from Darby, and shoots the officer, and then he notices that the gun has run out of bullets, and so he goes over to the officer, and the officer isn't dead, so he ends up killing the officer, and grabs his gun, and goes over to Darby to try and, like, he's just sitting on top, like, she's on the floor, and he's sitting on her chest, with the gun pointed at her head, and at this point, Darby has the screwdriver, because she hot-wired the car this way, when, from when she left rehab, takes a screwdriver, stabs Ash in the throat, and that's how he dies, and then in the end, it's just Darby's back at rehab, Jay's okay, and her sister comes to visit her at rehab. This book was amazing, but the movie was so good too that I honestly believe that the movie was better than the book. And that is a really hard thing to do because a lot of times books have so many details in them that the movies leave out, but this movie left out not a whole bunch of stuff that was in the book. And that's what I appreciated about it. And I wish I could go back and rewatch it for the first time, but I mean, whatever, that's not a big deal. But I believe if you like thrillers and intense hostage situations and a quick timeline that's less than 24 hours, No Exit would be the book that you should read. That is it for this video. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button. If you want to know when I'm posting more, hit that subscribe and that notification bell, and you'll be the first to know when I'm posting. And until next time, keep on reading, people. Bye!